My name is Mark Poirier and we do recycled lumber here. We bring in large timbers from uh, demolition sites and we remill them into flooring and other fine millwork. We've developed relationships with demolition contractors all over the Northeast. Uh, we also chase jobs. If we see somebody who has a building that's in disrepair, that looks like it's going to be coming down one way or the other, then we will introduce ourselves and try to make something happen. Demolition contract is very aggressive about finding people to buy the material so they don't have to dispose of it and it can actually make money from it. Flooring is the biggest percentage of our business, but we do a lot of resawn timbers, people doing architectural work. We sell a lot of rough stock to cabinet makers, furniture makers, even instrument makers. Finding the material is really exciting. And you get to go and see some buildings that are just unbelievable. Some jobs are more interesting than others, and if a job is very interesting, then yes, it's a big part of the whole uh, selling process of the material. There's a lot of history involved, and that history's got uh, some real kind of real power, sales power. And the, uh, you know, the best case scenario, people actually ask for wood from, you know, something that has some personal resonance for them. For them. Somebody may have grown up in a mill town like Lowell, or their parents may have, and their grandparents may have worked in the, in the warehouses and mills, and you know, they have this kind of personal connection. These timbers here, these are pretty cool. These are from Charlestown Navy Yard. These were ship's timbers. They were actual frame pieces for Constitution class frigates. And if you look at this, this stick here, this has got a nice sweep to it. This was actually hewn in the woods down south in Louisiana or Georgia, wherever it came from, to a pattern that was brought by Yankee shipbuilders down to the south. And they would inventory these pieces in Charlestown in the event that a ship needed repair. And they're from the War of 1812, and if the ship came in damaged, they needed to fit the ship out and get it back out into action as quick as possible. They kept these underwater in holding ponds in the Navy Yards. and. Um, when the age of wooden shipbuilding was over, we speculate they just filled in the holding ponds. And these, these were discovered during a um, uh, development of a marina. This is the, the shape of the limb. They just cleaned it up. That's a limb? Yeah, it gives you an idea how huge they were. That's not a trunk, that's no, no, a limb. No, that's a limb. Wow. That is huge. <laughs> these are air drying. We have to air dry them for about six months before we can mill them up. This is the heaviest wood in North America. Eight pounds per board foot. Nothing else in the North America that heavy. These came out of an old warehouse in Maine. They're pretty beat up, but they're yellow pine. That's a big kid. That's one of the most time consuming parts of the whole business. And if the metal's not out, then we get problems down the road. It goes from from this point to a saw, then to a planer, then to another saw, a rip saw, and then it goes through a molder, which has five heads and four cutters on each head. So if nails start going through there, it gets real expensive. So that's everything that came out. Right, and you never know what you'll find. You know, bullets, bird shot. We found bizarre hangers of every variety and conduit, strange things. Bullets? Bullets. A lot of the Civil War, of course, took place down where this stuff grew. So a lot of mini balls and things like that. This is a great example of really prime first growth hard pine. You see the ring density here is extremely tight. This, I don't know, I haven't counted it, but that's gotta be easily 150 years of growth right there. Probably 200. This is a new piece of wood right here. And if you look at the uh, the end grain, you can really see the difference in the growth rings. This this is crazy wide. I mean, this tree was probably sawn when it was about 40 years old, which is pretty typical now, forestry management. This tree was sawn when it was 400 years old. Big difference. This is white oak from uh, barn in Pennsylvania. And the great thing about this, this is first growth material as well. It's very, very dense grain, but it's picked up a lot of beautiful tone over the years. And it's also got a bunch of little bug marks in it, which is for some people very desirable. 
It's got a kind of French provincial look to it when it's all finished. You know, I love the wood and I love the business. I like I like the guys that uh, that I work with and I love going, finding the wood. Uh, it's exciting, you know, there's a lot of, uh, we're pretty vertically integrated. You know, we get everything going on from the demolition right through to the, the retail sales. So we, uh, we meet everybody in the chain, including the, the customers who are always interesting people. It's obvious uh, greenness is important to us. And we don't make a big issue out of that because it more or less speaks for itself. Anybody who doesn't understand that reclaimed lumber is good for the environment isn't thinking too hard about it. Uh, so that's a no-brainer, but the uh, the real aesthetic kicker is that the stuff is beautiful and it's much more beautiful than newly sawn material. The process of dismantling now is very different than it used to be. Disposing of waste is hugely expensive. Trucking is hugely expensive. So, you know, it's in everybody's best interest to salvage as much out of a, a demolition site as possible and demolition contractors have become very sophisticated about that. We're part of that puzzle.